Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a quick way to create hexagonal graph paper in Affinity Publisher for desktop using the horizontal triangular grids. And while I am working in Publisher here, the same steps apply in Designer and Photo as well. And for those of you on the iPad version of Publisher, I have a whole separate series in the works, including how to create digital papers like these for your planners and journals on the iPad. So stay tuned. Let's get started. So what are we trying to solve for here? Well, it's easy enough to create a hexagon shape using the built-in polygon. The problem comes in when you're trying to tile it across and down. And that's because while vertical and horizontal snapping exists, diagonal snapping doesn't. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to this new page and I'll grab my polygon tool. I'll command click to create a polygon. 150 is fine, I'll click OK. Now I do want this to be horizontal and flat on the top. So I'm gonna hold shift down and rotate 30 degrees. And then finally, I want to adjust my bounding box so it's vertical. So I'll hit period on my keyboard and then command period to lock that into place. You can also go to the top to select and do the same thing here. So I'm going to command J to duplicate that. And if I grab my move tool, you can see that I can very easily snap horizontally. I can also snap vertically. The problem comes in when I try to drag that diagonally. I'm getting lines, but it's not allowing me to snap those two diagonals together. And even if I move in a little bit and try and place it where I think it should be, it's difficult. So even if I select these two, let's see if I hit that on the mark, I can pretty much see that I didn't. It's hard to see unless I zoom in really close, but you can see right there, those are not sitting on top of one another, which means I'm going to run into issues when I go to tile this. I could use my pen tool to create what's called a construction line. And what that would mean is I'm going to select this polygon and my pen tool, and I'll click and then click to create a diagonal line right on top of that other polygon. I'll grab my move tool again and select that second one let me zoom in a little bit. And now when I snap, it's going to snap to that line. And that's because when I add or have my pen tool engaged, you can see that I have performed construction snapping. And that's great and it's helpful, but I want to tile this. And there's going to be other points where I need to snap diagonally, which means I need to keep this with me as I do that. There's a much easier way and that's to create a grid. So let's set that up. I'm going to go up here and toggle on the preview mode. That's going to set up my margins. I've set up quarter inch margins all the way around or 75 pixels. It's also given me a grid, but it's a standard grid and it's much too small. So I want to adjust that. I'll go up to view and down to grid and axis. And I want to choose advanced. And then under grid type, choose horizontal triangular. And the reason I want to do that is because again, I have a horizontal hexagon here and you can see that I have that same shape right here in the grid. If I were to choose triangular, it's going to give me that pointed hexagon here and that's not what I want. So let me bring that back to where it was. Now, one final thing I need to change here is the spacing. Remember, this is a 150 pixel hexagon. So my spacing needs to be half of that. Now, if you're ever not sure what half of something would be, just key in the size shape you've created. So in this case, 150 divided by two, and it'll figure out the math for you. So I'll go ahead and click close. And now I can just drag this shape right into place. And you can see that because the grid is on and so is snapping, I'm getting that nice snap line. Now, more importantly, if I duplicate this and drag this down, it's going to snap diagonally as well. So I'm ready to begin tiling this, but there's two things I want to note first. The first is that if I want to, I could use Studio Link to jump into Designer and turn this into a symbol. What that would allow me to do is make a quick change to any of the hexagons that I create in this graph paper. But really the only changes that I would make are to the color of the stroke, or to the width of the stroke. And I can do both of those simply by choosing the final group that I'm going to create. And I'll show you that when I'm done. The second thing that I want to note is that in this particular case, I have a margin. So obviously it would not tile seamlessly. But even if I opted to take this graph paper to the very edges of the paper, this is not a seamless pattern. 
This is intended solely as digital paper for a planner or for printables. If I were to try and put this on fabric or some other print on demand product that needed seamless tiling, it wouldn't work. The sides of the design would actually cause problems. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to take this hexagon and drag it up to the top here. And I want to place it in that first full hexagon at the top corner of my margins. Now you can see I got that nice snap line again. But if I zoom in, it's heading over the margin a little bit. I'm not worried about that. The thing about these grids is that most of the time they're not centered up on the canvas. You may end up having to do a little bit of adjustment with your alignment once you're done, but I'm not going to worry about that until everything is in place. So let me back out a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. I'll command J to duplicate. And once again, I'm gonna drag that diagonally and you can see I get that nice snap line. So let me just bring that back. I'll select both of these and I want this to look just like the other one. So in this case, my first and last column are the same height and depth at the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna do that same thing here. I'll select these shapes, command J to duplicate, and I'll hold down shift and just drag until that snaps and then power duplicate all the way across. Now I have an extra shape because again, I want the beginning and end to be the same height. So I'm just going to remove that one. I'll select all of the remaining hexagons, command J to duplicate. And I'm just gonna drag this down until it snaps into place and then power duplicate the rest of the way down. I have everything in place, but I have an extra row. So just like I had to remove a shape here, I need to remove all of these bottom hexagons because remember, I want this to match at the top as well as the bottom. So what I'm going to do is with my move tool, just scroll and click and grab the very bottoms of those hexagons and I'll get rid of them. Now, the reason that worked so easily is because in settings under tools, I have select object when intersects with selection marquee checked on. That allows me to simply touch a shape. I don't have to scroll over the entire thing. I find that sometimes that selects things I don't want, so it's a lot easier to work with that checked on. So now with these remaining shapes, I'm going to select them, command G to group them up. So this is that final group I was talking about. And I'll go up to the top and choose a line center and a line middle. Now remember I mentioned I didn't turn this into a symbol. So if I want to change the color of this, all I need to do is select this group. And let's say I want this blue. I'll make sure that the stroke is engaged and click on the blue. I can also go into the stroke settings and change the width. So if I want to go here and change this to maybe two, I can do that. I think I'll bring this down to one. Now, if I wanted to create a grid that's either smaller than this or larger than this, I just need to adjust the spacing of my grid. Remember, it's always half the size of whatever shape you're creating. So if I were to create a 75 pixel shape instead of a 150 pixel shape, I would just create spacing of 32.5. So that's how easy the built-in grids can make it to create non-standard graph paper for your digital planners or as printables. If you have any questions, let me know below. Or if you have a suggestion for a digital planner related tutorial that you'd like to see here on my channel, let me know that as well. If I'm not already in the process of creating it, I'll look to add it to the list. And if you like my teaching style, check out my full length classes either on Skillshare or my own website, The Creator Collage. Links to both are below. I have lots more publisher tutorials coming to the channel, so be sure to hit subscribe so you always know when a new one is published. In the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.